Today, we've got five tips to improve your casting through practice. Most anglers want to improve their cast. I certainly include myself in that group. So we have a decision to make. Do we invest the time up front practicing, improving before we head to the water, or do we slowly chip away at it, dealing with that frustration and slow improvement every chance we get to go fishing? All right, I know that practice is not something most of us have tons of time for in our busy lives, but I'm here to tell you that 10 to 15 minutes a few times a week can take your game to the next level. And it's all about spending your time wisely. We've all heard that old saying, work smarter, not harder. Well, that's what we're gonna run you through today with these five tips so that you can invest your time wisely and be ready to hit the water. Before we jump into our tips, I do wanna talk really quickly, I promise, about when and where to practice. Usually these are afterthoughts, but I think they can be really important. The win is pretty simple, I'll admit it. Pretty much any time you have available. But the big thing for me is not over-practicing and using your time wisely. When I said in the intro, 10 to 15 minutes, I really meant it. I've seen it happen time and time again where people will go out and they'll spend half an hour, 45 minutes, just casting, casting, casting. And they get tired, they get frustrated. And because of that, they're gonna set it up on the shelf and forget about it for a while. Maybe they're not gonna come back to it for another two weeks. So consistency is much more important than the, a big chunk of time all at once. I'd much rather chip away at it slowly over time, slowly improving, than try and do one marathon session. It's kind of like cramming for a test or slowly learning the material. We, we've all done both, let's be honest, but we all know that one works better than the other. Something else that's really important is to not wait for perfect conditions. I guarantee you, wherever you're fishing, I'm here in Northern Michigan, there will not be perfect conditions on the water. So it's really valuable to get yourself into that scenario during practice so that you know how to make the appropriate adjustments and deal with changing conditions. It doesn't matter if you're fishing here in Northern Michigan. It doesn't matter if you're fishing in the Mountain West or the East or maybe salt water. There will be difficult conditions no matter where you are. So the more prepared you are to handle them and make adjustments, the better you will be on the water. Let's talk real quick about where to practice. If you're lucky enough to have a lake or pond on your property, then good for you. I'm a little bit jealous, honestly. Water's a fantastic place to replicate real world conditions. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret though. I never use water for a casting lesson. I don't even wanna see it. I don't wanna be near it. Water is distracting. If you follow behind me and we go over a river, I'm gonna slow down and, and take a really good look. Anglers are optimists. We wanna think of the best possible thing and we wanna think about hatches and fish habitat and all these exciting things. So I, I tend to not be anywhere near water because I wanna focus on the task at hand. My personal favorite place to practice is a lawn or a local park. I'm usually at the local park where there's soccer fields in the morning. There's no kids around, they're at school. I have tons of room to do whatever drill, really isolate what I wanna work on, and there's no one around to see my tailing loops. It's great. So find somewhere that's close. The closer you are to it, the more likely you are to stop and actually go and use it and practice. Tip number one is use a yarn fly. You do not wanna be out there flinging your perfectly tied atoms or your favorite streamer. It just, you don't need to be flinging hooks around. Number one, you're gonna catch the grass. Number two, you could hook yourself, which is why today we're definitely going to be wearing sunglasses. This is required. Even with a yarn fly, you can hit yourself in the eye and end your day on a terrible note. Why we like yarn is it's visible, 
and it simulates the air resistance of a fly. Two things we want. Plus, it's not gonna get caught in the grass and you can see exactly where your fly is landing. Real quick, let's run you through how to rig up this yarn fly. I get this question all the time. It's shockingly easy. All you need is some egg yarn. I'm going with chartreuse today. Pick your favorite color or pick a color you see well. How about that? I'm just gonna trim a little piece here off of this. You do not need a whole lot. I actually do not use a whole chunk. Uh, it's just too thick, really. And so I'm gonna split this chunk into probably a third. Okay, take that off. Really, all I'm doing is taking my leader, wrapping it around. I'm gonna come to you here. Wrapping it around. Let me hide behind this. This yarn. And then I'm gonna tie a clinch knot. So if you can tie a fly on, you can tie some yarn on. And then what you're left with looks like this. Might get out of the way. So pretty easy, right? Number two is make your practice intentional. By that, I mean practice to solve specific problems. It's just not gonna help you to go and try and cast the entire fly line every time you go practice. In Michigan, that's rarely gonna help you if you're a trout angler. Sure, it looks cool, but my guess is it's probably kind of sloppy. Um, I see this all the time, so that's just a little bit of a side note. But when I'm on the river, I pay attention if I'm having trouble with a presentation. And then I develop a practice plan to solve that so that I have a tool in my quiver the next time I encounter it. It can be as simple as there's a tree or a stiff breeze on my right shoulder, so I need to work on my off shoulder cast. It can be a backhand cast. Maybe I'm fishing in the front of the boat and I do not want to cast over it. And pay attention to the things that are frustrating you on the water and practice to solve them. Tip number three is to use a target. This is the absolute best way to get feedback on your cast, especially if you're working by yourself so that you can make the necessary adjustments and hit your spots. I just wanna say, remember to not be overly focused and frustrated with your accuracy right out of the gate. Your first focus should always be muscle memory and technique and then distance and then accuracy will come. I promise you that, that's how I teach. I think it's always better to work on your technique and muscle memory for power application, then work some line out, get closer to that target, accuracy will come. Tip number four is super simple. All of you have one of these in your pocket. I know it, don't pretend you do not. Record yourself. This is a super powerful tool to give you more feedback, especially on your technique, on your loops, where your stop point is, where your loop is behind you. Things that we always struggle to see by ourselves when we're practicing can easily be visualized by recording yourself with your phone. Do a few casts, especially when you're working on a specific technique. I always believe in isolating. So if you're trying to figure out your stop point on your forward cast, record three or four of those, and then go back, review, make adjustments. It can be incredibly powerful to see what's happening. I coach tons of people. We have, you know, our shop guides tons of people. And the number one thing anglers struggle with is taking coaching and applying it in a short amount of time. And I think a big part of that is being able to see what you're doing. I think there's this belief when I'm behind you guiding and I keep saying, you gotta stop that rod higher, stop high, let it fly, that you're doing it. And until you see your rod come all the way down, it's tough to actually click with your brain. So record yourself. This is a powerful tool. It's easy, you have this in your pocket take advantage of it. Tip number five is to make a plan and stick to it. We talked about this just a little bit on number two when I was talking about being intentional with your practice. Well, today I'm gonna to give you the three drills that have really helped me improve my casting and that I think can do a lot 
for your casting as well. The first drill I wanna run you through is called the Orbit. Now, if you have a limited amount of time like most of us and you're just gonna do one drill, this is probably the drill you wanna spend your time on. I take a target, I throw it out into the field or wherever you have to practice so that I have room in every direction. Now, this is important. You want room in every direction because we're gonna be rotating around. I place that target and then I start myself with a realistic distance for trout fishing in Michigan. You know, start with your realistic, your shortest realistic casting distance that you'll have to deal with. I'll start with maybe 10, 15 feet. And I'm gonna hit that target, take two or three steps, hit that target, take two or three steps, hit that target, and so on. I am going to orbit around the target. This is incredibly useful especially when you get those windy days, because you're gonna to have to deal with wind behind, wind in front, wind on both sides, so that you can start to adjust your cast for conditions you're dealing with on the water at different distances. After I complete an orbit, I'm gonna take some steps back. Maybe I'm gonna jump up to 20 feet, 25 feet, orbit around, jump back to 30, 35 feet, orbit around 40, 60, Find some increments that make sense to you, but always, always, always start in close because when we're in close, we're not focused on shooting far distance. We can really isolate the technique and make sure our loops are tight and our flies drifting down to our target, not slamming down. So this is called the Orbit. It's a fantastic drill. It's something that you can do in probably 10 minutes and just pick a few distances. But like I said, always start short and then increase distance as you go on. The next drill I'd like to take you through is called three wide. I use three targets for this and I place them an equal distance from myself. One straight out and two off to about 45 degree angles on each side. This drill is great for practicing direction changes while maintaining that effective casting technique. So remember, the most effective cast is straight back and straight forward. We want things to move in a straight line. So instead of going straight from target A on our far left to target C on our far right, we need to cut the pie in half. This creates a much more efficient cast. You can maintain energy throughout your cast and change directions and deliver your fly accurately. The last drill I'm gonna take you through today, I call the traffic light. I take three targets and I stack them vertically all in a line this is your distance casting drill. This is really helpful to be able to make a cast right to the first target, take some line and practice shooting it to the second one, and then to the third. Always start in close though. Do not place your first target 60, 80 feet away. We gotta start in close just like everything else and work long. That will help us maintain good technique. Measure these targets out can keep a consistent distance. For me, I'm going saltwater fishing here in a few months and it's really, really helpful to practice a specific distance so that when my guide says, hey, 30 meters, I know exactly how far that is in my head and I can make that cast. So stack these up, practice this, shoot some line, have some fun with it. Maybe do this one last, remember, do the orbit first. Let's, let's work on that accuracy and adjusting to the wind before we just go shoot tons of line. But get out there, practice, and have some fun. All right, that's it for us today. Hopefully these tips have gotten you motivated to get out there, practice, dial in your cast so that you're ready to hit the water. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you get a chance, check out thenorthernangler.com for all your fly fishing and fly tying needs. We'll hope to see you soon in the shop or out on the water.